Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Mandy and Jeff from Twisted Cedar Properties, and we're going to be talking about how to invest in smaller rural markets. I'm so excited that Mandy and Jeff are here today to share their knowledge with you guys. Before we get into it, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And now let's do this. Mandy, Jeff, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, so great to see you guys. Um, why don't, before we get into it, why don't you guys give us a bit of a background on who you are and what you do as real estate investors? You want to go, Mandy? Do you want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll start by just saying, Darren, thanks very much for having us on this morning. It's it's great to hear that intro. Usually I'm watching a video of you talking and not being on it, so it's fantastic. Um, so Twisted Cedar Properties, so we've been investing uh, just over a year now. Um, we both came through the, uh, came up through the Keyspire network and with the whole COVID stuff, we ended up, both of us sort of being out of work and focused 100% on investing and we put, just dove right into it. Um, and it's been, it's been fantastic. It's been a bit of a ride. How did you choose your market that you're investing in? And tell us a little bit about the markets that you're investing in. So we, we primarily invest north of Orangeville. So we prim invest anywhere from Orangeville to Owen Sound in that sort of large triangle that's there. Because we're starting out, we didn't want to go and invest in New Brunswick or Nova Scotia or somewhere far away. We really wanted to be hands on. The first project we did, the the uh, the flip house or the the rehabilitation, um, it was in our backyard, and I was going primarily doing most of the work, so we had to be within 45 minutes to an hour of the location. So it really started us in that area. And once we got into it and started looking, it's there's so much fertile ground in the small markets that yeah. it's it's really where we're going to be definitely focusing from now on we just kept seeing opportunity after opportunity and you know underperforming um both multi-tenant buildings and single family homes which we have a passion for uh just kind of bringing underperforming properties back to life whether that be a farmhouse um that you know i just it's just a shame to see them torn down or um or a multi-tenant building that hasn't been taken care of a bit of a slumlord situation. So those, those are really what we, what we look for. And, um, this market seems to have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of that. Um, and let's face it, you know, uh, most investors are, are pointing towards larger markets, metropolitan areas, um, because they feel that, um, you know, the appreciation is higher, which of course you're, you're getting great appreciation in those markets. Um, but once we started running the numbers, it's really, it's all relative. It's apples to apples. It's just on a, a, a smaller scale. So mm. um, the returns are there and they're just as great. Um, you just have to know how to leverage it. What were uh, some of your, I guess, apprehensions about being in a small market? Were you concerned about um, cause your first project, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, was a kind of a flip of this, of this farmhouse. Were you concerned about, you know, the after repair value, the potential buyers, like, are you going to, you know, kind of price yourself out of a market when you're doing this, you know, fancy renovation on, a, on an older property? Like, what were the initial concerns? And maybe uh, talk us through your, your thought process of uh, getting past those first hurdles. That was definitely a concern. Um, but we took the time to look at all the comparables in the area specifically for that farmhouse rehab um, and it was in a more affluent um, section of that town small town um, but seeing what you know comparable homes were had been selling for um, it, it did give us the confidence and just doing research on the, the appreci appreciation of the general area so um, and it just became a you know you're getting it for one one price over here and it was such a tear like the house was in terrible shape so really anything we did to that place was going to elevate it and uh fetch a better a better uh price than than what we sold for so and we looked at it as a learning experience mm -hmm. like we did take it on for uh, largely in part to to be hands-on and learn the process from beginning to end so we could speak to trades and and know what's needed um for that process so um yes those fears were there but uh, you know i think we we went into it conservatively um and, and were confident once we had that supporting information so 
Um, and we did amazing. So I'll let Jared yeah. have some and we were, we were really conscious to, uh, through the entire process of making sure that we didn't, like you say, price ourselves out of the market. Mm -hmm. um, we made sure to, to look at the finishes and say, like, you know what, we're going to have higher end finishes that you might normally have in a, a farmhouse, but we're not doing downtown Toronto marble everything. And, and it, it was really sort of a nice in-between place to be where we did. I mean, we did some fantastic finishes where we had uh, sort of quartz countertops and, and nice cabinets and, and um, custom custom doors yeah. um, and then vinyl plank and just like flooring throughout the entire house but we we kept it to a level that would we knew would be easier to resell in that area if you want to say yeah we paid attention to the demographic what is the population of the place that you bought this property in <laughs> it's about 1700 oh well, so super small yeah, yeah. so it's the, the nice thing with the town so it's a small town called durham ontario and it's straight north from uh, from Guelph on Highway 6, about just under an hour north of Guelph. And it's really, it's a blink town. If, as you're going through, there's a Tim Hortons, a set of stoplights, and you're out of town. Yeah. Um, and so it was almost by accident that we fell into this house. We'd been looking for houses in the area, and we'd seen a ton. And we walked through this house, and it was in such bad condition that we walked out of the house sort of rubbing our hands going, okay, this is the one, we got it, we found it. And yes. it really, it, it, it really like didn't matter where it was. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, the property was special too. Like yeah. it, it's backed onto a river. Uh, so, and on the other side of that river is the local conservation area. So, um, you know, knowing that nothing's going to be built behind you, uh, to, on two and a half acres backing onto a river that you have access to. So um, there were some definite perks to this property that we knew would be attractive to prospective buyers. And, you know, COVID hit right after that, right after mm -hmm. we closed on this, actually right before we closed, but we, we had already put in the offer and it was accepted as under contract. Um, so as we started seeing things develop, I mean, it was a mix of all kinds of things, the fear, okay, what's going to happen with the market now? Like we just bought a house. This is our first project. Um, how is this COVID thing going to play out? But as time went on, you saw it, everybody saw it, you know, things just started getting crazy with the market. So, you know, we accidentally timed it perfectly. <laughs> I mean, talk about apprehension, you know, going into flip, you know, one of your first properties and then in the middle of a pandemic, I mean, you guys must've been freaking out a little bit in the end, yeah. it worked out probably in your favor uh, yeah. because sure of is. the mass, you know, let's call it exodus out of the major cities for a lot of people to find a more rural setting when people can work from home and, and those kinds of things that we're seeing in the marketplace. Did that have an effect you think on the after repair value once you guys got it on the market absolutely 100 yeah. so it, and and you're talking about apprehension so if, if i go back in time to that that period sort of we closed in mid-april uh 2020 just as uh just as everything started to happen um so things were just starting to come on the news about covid and possible closures and we were both working at the time so we closed on the house everything was great we had our timelines in place of what we we're going to do um and then our jobs got taken out from underneath us by COVID. And mm. also- Which was also perfect. Yeah, and, and also because of all the traveling and stuff, in the first month that we owned this house, we were both sick. Yeah. So, and it so could have been COVID, it, it could have just been the flu, but we were sick for three weeks and it delayed mm. things. And there was material shortages that I'm sure you're aware of. There was all these things playing against you in the, in the real estate market. Yeah. But the saving grace was the appreciation. Hmm. Um, so in that area, so the standard appreciation was about 10 to 12% appreciation a year. And it did 42% last year. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it was, it was, again, it was just incredible. So we, we went into the project hoping that we would come out with about a, a sale figure of around 560 to 600,000. That was sort of where we wanted to be. And, and that was a good place. We were like, that's solid. Yeah. This is this is gonna be great. And um, and so we ended up at uh, selling it at seven fifteen. Um mm -hmm. and we only had ten thousand dollars of our own money into it. Um so as you can imagine with that type of profit, we had um roughly around a what was it, two hundred almost two hundred K. 
Yeah. 200K of profit on the property. Yeah, that's wow. after we, we did have um, some investors come in and, and help out with the um, rental costs. So after paying them, still coming out with almost 200K in our pocket. Were you guys competitive on the offer or was it just kind of like pre that time? And so there wasn't a lot of eyes on these properties. Actually, there, there were several offers had already been put in. Um, this was a reluctant seller. She wanted to sell, but didn't want to sell. It was uh, an emotional, you know, she'd been there a while. Uh, she'd lost her husband there. So we got creative with our offer um, and just trying to nudge her and help her make that decision. Um, we offered to clean the place up for her if uh, offered to let her leave things there if she didn't want to take it we offered to pay for a moving truck you know like we just we knew this was a great deal and we didn't want to lose it so we we really uh tried to make it a situation that she felt comfortable with Mm. Um, so she had declined other offers um that were higher than what we offered yeah so uh we feel good about that that we we were able to to get her over the line so, yeah, for sure. No, that's so smart. I think, you know, working with the sellers to, to make a situation that, that uh, to your point, you know, your offer was not necessarily based on price, it was based on conditions. And I think that's a, yeah. a huge learning for many people that, you know, if you become adversarial in the negotiation process, sometimes it can hurt you where you can really uh, find the seller's needs and then figure out the price after that. So that, that's, that's right. And, and honestly, all it, all it really cost us on the, this offer because she did leave a lot of stuff behind, it, it cost us two 30 yard bins. Yeah. Which is so what, really at I, the end of the day, it wasn't, wasn't the end which of the we day. were going to have there anyway, because it yeah. was a full gut. So it was, exactly. it was really, it wasn't much for us to offer that, but it was a lot for her and it took it, it uh, brought her, her barriers down a little bit. Mm. So, yeah. So you said you bought it for three fifty. dollars uh, What did you spend on the reno? So we were right around the 200 K mark on the reno. Nice. Um, so we ended up spending more than we originally planned, which I, I'm sure everything goes over in, in cost. Um, yeah. But when we started peeling back the layers on this house, uh, it was really, it was like an onion. I mean, we pulled back one corner and, and we found a leak behind the ceiling that had been leaking for 15 years that rotted everything from the top corner to the basement. Um, There's we, always surprises when you're pulling it back that, yeah. that much. And it's an old, older home that hasn't been kept up. So um, it was ex- somewhat expected, but there were some things that we just couldn't walk away seeing that and we couldn't cover it up. That's not our MO. Like, mm-hmm. so we, we fixed it. We, we did it the way it should be done. And um, it showed in the results. It was beautiful. Uh, I wanted to live there. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, it, I did see some of the photos and it looked, uh, looked amazing. You guys did a great job. How was the experience of actually physically doing the work? I know you guys were pulling super long hours. Um, would, you know, was, was it, uh, did, you, or did you find it rewarding? And then my second question is, you know, would you do it again? So we're that's... still together. <laughs> we're, we're that was still my together. third question. <laughs> that was a relationship. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It was, it was a great experience. There's no question at all, no question about it. It was probably for us and what we're going to be doing with investing going forward was the best thing we could do to start with because mm-hmm. it was so educational. Uh, we met a lot of great trades. Uh, we met a lot of fantastic people along the way. We got advice when we got into these small issues here and there from all kinds of people throughout the different networks we're involved with. And it really brought us closer together with, with what we're doing as investors. As well mm-hmm. as confidence, right? Like yeah. doing that hands-on and knowing it from front to back. Like Jeff's amazing with the trades. He can literally do everything. Um, so that was a huge asset. But, you know, he he was the GC and the laborer on everything. And I was his assistant. So um, it, it was tough. I, we're not going to, you know, hide that... It, there were some challenging times for sure, um, but you have to keep your eye on the prize and your outcome, and uh, and we got through it. So Let, it's, let's just say we're not going to be hanging drywall together anytime soon. No more drywall. <laughs> no. no. That'll do it. That'll kill any relationship. I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> so I mean, we are. The plan is not to keep doing all the work all the time ourselves, uh, but knowing that we can when we have to or need to. Mm-hmm. Um, or support other investors who who need help with 
with that stuff is gold. Like it, it, it was exactly what we needed to do. Was that your biggest challenge? Would you say was finding uh, tradespeople, skilled tradespeople, to maybe work in these more rural locations? Yeah, still is really. Um, there's a lot of sub trades, not a whole lot of like GCs. Yeah, most most of the large <clears throat> GCs and uh, that we find in these smaller markets are building subdivisions. I mean, and it's really what it comes down to. There's there's so many little towns that are exploding with subdivisions. The, the 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 trades can't keep up um so to find someone to come and do a hundred thousand dollar job or a two hundred thousand dollar job they're just sort of thumbing the nose at you saying well i've got a five million dollar job and i'm going to be working for five years over here right so it, it's tough to get them but they're they're there and yeah. and when you do find them and you find the good ones that really want to work with you it i mean it, it can be a really great relationship and, and it, it's going to be something going forward where you you build the team and we stick together yeah and to add to that, I'd say there's a bit of a, because it's a small market, there's a bit of a resistance um, to like new outside developers, you know, from Toronto coming in. There's, there's this, you know, overhanging um, taboo. Um, so it's really about just being human and talking to people. Um, we've had our best luck reaching out to locals and and so if, if one trade comes we find one good trade we ask them um or you know at the local hardware store uh, things like that so just not so much getting on you know the googler and looking for a great a great gc but just being boots on the ground and getting involved in the community spending some time there um, I'm on all the local community groups on Facebook in that area, so I'm I'm always connecting with people on there, telling them what our needs are, what we're doing. So I, I think that if if anyone is interested and and sees a small market as as a good opportunity, I would say that first thing is just be a part of the community. Yeah, be involved with the market. There's an emotional element to it that you seem to connect with the community and also the people involved in the transaction. And I think that's probably leading to a lot of your success is the fact that you do take this sort of business and almost like humanitarian approach to everything that you do. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys, I think would probably leave a little bit of profit on the table in these smaller markets to make sure that the relationships are intact. And, and, and moving forward in a, in a positive manner. Is that correct? For sure. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't mess around with that. That's the one thing in the smaller markets is that if your name is tarnished in a big market, there's still a lot of that big market to yeah, work with. There's more anonymity, whereas here, like, yeah, those guys from down the street, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, so, so it's important to, you know, treat everybody how you would expect to be and to respect them and what they do and um, their town. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of it as well. But it's amazing once you do that and you sort of get into those towns, how many things come to you. Yeah. Um, and we've had, we've had people approach us out of the blue and say, Hey, I've, I know someone who's got a couple buildings. Would you guys be interested in buying them? Yeah. And mm. sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, but there's lots of, um, opportunity and people just they uh, want to help like because yeah. you've shown them that respect um and they see that you're honest people wanting to do good things in their community um they they help you out so um yeah it's been good so you have to use you have to use y'all a lot and, uh, <laughs> hey, and hey, hey. you guys you guys you guys uh list off all of your animals that you have in your property <laughs> <laughs> It, it does help that we are country people. Um, yeah. I think they, they recognize that. I mean, it's, there's been times where we, I've felt the barrier like upon first meeting, but when we say where we live and um, you know, what we, what we do. Give them a dozen, start, give them a I mean, dozen yeah. eggs. Does that help too? Yeah, we well? just yeah. bring them fresh eggs and and, yeah. and you constantly keep your truck dirty. Don't That's right. yeah. <laughs> Show up in a dirty truck and you're yeah. golden. <laughs> <laughs> no clean trucks around here. That's amazing. Mandy, Jeff, uh, thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, talking about 
something that often doesn't get talked about. I think investing in, in smaller mm -hmm. markets, obviously you guys have found a niche. I think it's really working for you. And, and thanks for, for sharing uh, your knowledge with us and, and those couple transactions uh, excited to hear how the, how the uh, multifamily ends up uh, and when that ends up getting completed, we'll have to have you guys back and talk about yeah. some numbers on that one. But the flip was definitely a huge success for you guys. And I'm so happy to, to see you guys progressing in your real estate investing journey. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this session with Mandy and Jeff, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Mandy, Jeff, thanks again for being here, taking some time out of your busy day to join us. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to us being able to meet in person very soon, and I uh, look forward to hearing more stories about your upcoming investments. Thanks, Thanks Darren. Darren. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for having us. Talk to you guys soon.